I'm Matt, founder and CEO of Live School, and this is the Live School podcast. Our guest today is Dr. Maurice Jones, assistant principal leading culture and climate across four schools in York, Pennsylvania. Dr. Jones, great to have you on the pod today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's just start out with a, a bit about you. Could you tell us kind of how you got into education and what led you into administration? Yeah, sure. Um, well, education has always been um, in my family. My, my mother is a former former teacher, currently runs several uh, educational institutions. Um, uh, my, my, my brother, um, everybody, I have a bunch of aunts and uncles that have been in education, but it has always been a passion of mine to uh, inspire the youth and to move things forward. Um, so I started out, of course, as a math teacher um, and then continued on into uh, administration and have and have truly, truly loved um, seeing that light bulb click on for students and supporting staff as they uh, support academic needs for for students. Fantastic. Um, and turning to your current school, how did you all first decide to really get serious about a school wide system for you know positive behavior? What led to that that push? Well, it was, it was actually started out as a district push. Um, we are fortunate here in the school district of the city of York to have a uh, district-wide initiative. So all of our schools, um, our, our pre-K to eights, as well as the high school, use and implement live school. So it was great to have a common language that staff and students and even families understand at, um, from all the from pre-K all the way up to 12th grade that, um, that the focus of our platform that we use is uh, live school. Um, but the beautiful thing about it is, like I said, we have an overall push to improve climate and culture through PBIS, through school-wide PBIS, and we use Live School as that as that as that tool um, to implement and move that forward. That is really fantastic, and I want to give a quick shout out to the district leadership at York because I think they really are on the cutting edge of seeing this as a key priority and something that district leadership also needs to put a focus on. You know, it's something that school leaders have have known for some time and. Uh, it's it's really impressive uh, what's happening there. Could you talk a little bit more to what's it like that you go into multiple different buildings across your district and there is a common language, there is a common sense that this this matters, this is part of the culture? Yeah, I mean, to, for in my particular role, like I said, floating between uh, multiple building, multiple buildings, but overall supporting that, that 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 need to increase climate and culture, it makes my job just that little bit easier. Um, because when I say live school, when I say we, we utilize and implement the um, the acronym Pride, um, so that is our, our our standard that we use and that is embedded in our live school system and in our school implementation. So when I go to different staff or, or even students or parents, um, I can use that common language and it makes my job a lot easier as kind of like the icebreaker. Because when I say live school, I could be talking about all these different edu academic in um, uh, different tools and stuff that we use. But across the board, everybody knows live school, which is a great thing. Um, so no matter whom I'm talking to, whatever is going on, it makes it a lot easier that we can start that middle ground. And, and a sense of filming uh, of, of being familiar with that program and platform. And with the PRIDE acronym, is that also district wide or is that just specific to your campus? It's also district wide. So PRIDE wow. B stands for prepared, the R stands for respect, I stands for integrity, D stands for determination, and E stands for engagement. So that's that's the that's the standard that we hold all of our students and staff to and our families, ultimately, all of our stakeholders. And as you can see, if you take a look at our live school, that's embedded into our into our platform. So we have each letter acronym has like subcategories that, that we reward students and staff for for accomplishing that 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 are set criteria. So, like I said, it's a beautiful thing when the entire district is on the same board and we're all using the same common language, because no matter what, whether I get students transitioning from eighth grade into the high school or from the elementary grades to the middle school grades, it's that common language. Even when we have students that are transient and coming in and out of district, every time they come back to our district, that's a sense of, of familiarity to, to understanding the pride model, more importantly, live school. Yeah, I, I can imagine for a student, like those transitions are always exciting, but stressful when you're leaving one school and, you know, yeah. being promoted, going to middle, going to high. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that experience of like, wow, this is still, there's a continuity there that, that must really be, you know, impactful. Let's talk about the fun stuff that students are able to participate in. So uh, you've set these standards for students, you're teaching these behaviors, and then uh, you know, there's ways that students are recognized and rewarded. Uh, so tell us about some of the things students get to do uh, at, at your campus, for instance. 
Yeah, so I mean, the beautiful thing of, of this district is they give each principal leader in each building the autonomy to create those events um, and that support. But like I said, the commonality is through using the live school system to reward and to award those particular points. So um, I, I've been a part of, of planning teams and part of planning events um, anywhere from from fun days and fall fest or different fests throughout the quarters of the of the year. Um, so students can use their live school points that they have accrued to purchase a fun fill event. We'll do things like movie days. Um, we'll do things like um, like ice cream social events. Um, we did a bingo event at one of my schools um, a couple a week or two ago. Um, we did also a waffle party. So believe it or not, we had all of our teachers bring in their their homemade uh, waffle irons. And uh, it was a beautiful thing to have all of our support staff and teachers making homemade waffles. I mean, we could have easily went out and got like egos or frozen things, but to have that impact of a homemade waffle, um, the, the students loved it. And that particular event, just as an example, was like 200 live school points. So students were really saving up for about a month and a half to to be engaged in that. And they could put whatever toppings they want on it. They loved it. Um, for some of our for some of my high school students, we have things like um, they could purchase tickets to the social or to a dance. Um, they could purchase tickets to sporting events. Um, so instead of paying the three or four dollars to gain admission to the basketball dance to the basketball game, um, they can purchase their live school. You can use their live school points to purchase um, a, a ticket to the basketball game or whatever, football game or whatever. Um, in each school that also has in, embedded into our tier one um, PBIS, they have a school store to where students on a weekly basis can can use their live school points to purchase trinkets and different items, the motivating items to um, in, in their in their in their unique school uh, store. So it looks different at the high school than it does at the K to eights or pre-K to eights. Um, and each school looks different as well. But like I said, that's the beautiful thing about it is that the common language is, all right, I know I need to earn points in my live school system so I can have these these result, these, these rewards, X, Y, and Z. Has anything surprised you in terms of like a reward that just really was a hit with the students, uh, you know, that maybe you, you weren't expecting? Yeah, surprisingly, like I said, surprisingly, the waffle bar was a crazy hit. I didn't think that was going to go off because, like I said, all of our students have access because we're a Title One school. All of our students have access to breakfast in the morning. So the fact that we and we did it like middle of the day, like just before lunch. And surprisingly, I was like, wow, waffle bar. So we did it. This is this, the, the second year we've done it. Um, and surprisingly, like I said, a cheap thing like getting a bag of waffle mixes with fifteen dollars and then having the waffles come in and then the toppings like literally the event itself to feed 500 kids was like like thirty dollars. And it was just a huge hit. Just curious, like what what do you chalk that up to? Like that students were so excited by that. Um, do you think it was just the the buzz of it, the food, the camaraderie? I would say a mix of all of that. Um, we, like I said, we're, I'm very fortunate to be in a school district with, with a lot of supportive staff that are all in for my crazy ideas. <laughs> so, so I remember when we, we had our first executive leadership meeting and, and we had, and it was like, oh, I don't think that's possible. That's possible. And I was like, let's just try it. You know what I mean? And after some coaching, some coaxing of the, of the team, they were like, yeah, let's do it. And then I had to, and funny, funny story real quick. Um, first person I, I, after we finished our executive meeting, we were going to do it. The very next person I spoke with was our, was our maintenance person, our building and grounds coordinator. Cause I'm like, look, we're going to have about 20 waffle irons. <laughs> can the building, can, can the building uh, handle it? So, and it was, uh, it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing because we did have some, some power outages, but the maintenance guy was ready. He was ready to flip the switch and flip the breakers and go from there. So all, all hands on deck. From All hands on deck. All <laughs> I hands love on it. Deck. Yeah, and it was, it was a beautiful thing. So, um, obviously, like implementing something school wide, getting that you know consistency and getting everyone on the same page, it's not easy. Uh, and I think people who have led initiatives at the school level can really appreciate how much work goes into that and how much feedback you need to take in and incorporate. And I, I'm just wondering if you could talk us talk to us about kind of the bumps and curves, you know, during rolling out a system like this and helping making sure the teacher's feedback is incorporated, but also making that push for consistency and, and buy-in. Well, I mean, that's that's an ongoing challenge across the board in education of how do you take an initiative, build up a common a common leader, a common goal, a common vision, and let it be of, of importance to everybody across the board. So, of course, around the district, I'm known as a crazy PBIS guy with these pie in the sky uh, 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 things to just get kids excited about things. So my level of passion is usually found to be like on a 200% level. So how do I take that level of passion 
push it, push it on to my leadership team, which I need to be around 150 percent or 120 percent to then pass on to the uh, to the staff, the boots on the ground to be at about 80 uh, <laughs> percent excitement level that I have. So in, in the best way I found of doing it is we we I mean, if you're familiar with PBIS, school wide PBIS, there's three tiers to it. Um, so you have your, your tier one, tier two and three tier three for students. I literally just take that same model and replicate it for our staff and just find out what supports our staff need to fully implement PBIS with Fidelity and, and just using that same model that we do with our students, using teachers as, as our students, you know what I mean? And just finding out what the needs are, sending out a plethora of surveys and, and having that open door communication um, with staff to find out what do you need to make sure that this is implemented with Fidelity in your classroom so that you support the bigger vision. So it just starts with having a shared vision, having that crazy, that crazy guy like myself to be fully passionate about it and just trying new things. Like I said, if, if we wouldn't have pushed the waffle, that's becoming a consistent thing on a quarterly basis that we got to do waffles. Kids and staff are looking forward to it. So, um, yes, it comes with its challenges. It comes with the hiccups, but anything worth doing does. Um, and anything that that's that's worth pushing forward does. And the beautiful thing about live school is it makes it easy. We're able to pull data. I'm able to pull data on a weekly basis to find out what staff are exemplifying what we want to, what staff need a little more push, a little more coaxing. And, and I, I share all those reports that I get. I share them with the staff. So it's completely transparent um, and moving things forward. So you see who the top assigner for 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 live school points was for this week. And, and I reward that staff with a little uh, um with an email blast and thank you, kudos to you. And then I give you you points on your live school, live school pages and stuff like that. So just keeping it transparent and just making sure that I, I see what you're doing. I'm watching what you're doing and I'm going to reward you for it just like you should be rewarding your kids. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, it's, it's like really applying the PBIS philosophy and then also literally the, the, the tiers. Uh, I think that's a pretty innovative uh, idea. And I'm just curious, what kinds of data specifically are you using to try to assess, you know, which tier, quote unquote, a, a staff member is in and then kind of prioritize your effort and your precious time towards, you know, who really needs a little bit more coaching or coaxing, as you've said? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, beautiful, the beautiful thing about it is, like I said, because because it is a, a, a district expectation, that bar is kind of set um, from there. So then what I would use is I use both quantitative and qualitative data um, to just assess the ongoing progress of our students. And then I mean, of our teachers, excuse me, and then put them in the tiers as, as moving forward. So, of course, tier one, I would say our staff that are exempt are are going to with that bar that has been set and have been exceeding or excelling past that. Tier two would be those staff that need a little more supports or is might be a novice with the live school system or how to implement it properly in their uh, in, in their classrooms. And then my lovely tier three staff are those those seasoned vets. I like to say those seasoned teachers that are stuck on some some of them might be stuck on the old ways and just like not know how to or not willing to appropriately implement it in their classroom. So that, that's where I find the, 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 the beautiful, courageous conversations with my tier three staff, but they, they exist and they usually keep things for, moving forward. Um, so like, it, it sounds like tier three is really where that one-on-one, -on -one, like really heart to heart, really understanding, hey, what, what, what barriers are you seeing? Like how, what's your approach and, and where, where maybe the inconsistencies and try to work through those together, which, I mean, it makes sense. It, it, you know, teaching is really hard and there's a lot going on in the classroom. And so sometimes, you know, it can be helpful to have someone else to think through, like, how, how could I fit this in and how could I make this feasible, you know, for my classroom? And, and, and they're usually the ones that help push the bubble forward and really sharpen, sharpen my iron. You know, I mean, iron sharpens iron. So really, really push it forward because I usually lean on those tier three teachers and they're the ones that help year on month on a monthly basis improve. Because, like, for example, one of the most critical feedback I received from one of my tier three teachers was is that they need more advanced communication. So I went back to the leadership team and said, look, we're, we're doing the next fest. We need to get this out as soon as possible, although our next fest. Is not until until January. We need to get communication out to our staff in October um, so that they can plan and stuff accordingly. So that was a, a very good uh, uh, change that came back from from direct qualitative feedback. Kudos to you, because I think when you get that hard iron sharpens iron type feedback, it's easy to be defensive. Like, man, you know, you know how many things we have going on? You know, it's hard to plan that far in advance. But instead, say, you know what, we're going to push. We're going to try to get this out earlier. Uh, it's a powerful idea that sometimes, you know, maybe your quote unquote tier three teachers actually have really good 
points on maybe what's not working. And if you incorporate those, you'll win them over and make your, your whole school better for it. I tend, I tend to take those tier three and invite them to the leadership team. So like on my leadership team now at each of the buildings that I supervise, they were some of them, I would say a good 50 percent of them were at one point the resistors. <laughs> but now they're on board. So whenever I have an initiative or want to move things first, they're the first ones to poke holes in it. You know what I mean? And say, all right, we can do this. We shouldn't do this. And then once we actually re- release out a new initiative or a new push, it's already had holes poked in and it filled back up. So we get less resistance from there. I, I love that. Um, can you tell us about, has there been maybe like a cool moment where, you know, live school and your positive system has made a, a, a positive difference with a student or a classroom that just kind of stands out to you as something where you're like, man, that, that, that makes me feel really good about all this work we're doing. Well, I mean, on, on a daily basis, uh, to be truthfully honest, because, um, and I'll give you one, one direct example. Um, oftentimes as in our role as administration, we get called or subpoenaed to court for different things. You get called and subpoenaed to court. Nine times out of 10, the information that we are asked to provide is usually negative or punitive for that for said student. And there's been many multiple cases, many, many times and multiple opportunities where I found, and the only positive data that I could find is through live school. You know I mean? Seeing what students were rewarded for, why they were rewarded for, and the frequency they were rewarded for them. So I've literally, you know I mean, done, done data things through, through the insights on live school, done a sweep for that student and, and actually brought that data to a court meeting. So when they're talking about negative things about attendance and this and that, I can say, well, look, when this student is here, when he is a button seats and he is doing what he needs to do, he's getting rewarded for engagement. He's getting rewarded for pride. He's getting rewarded for this. And here's what he spent his live school points on in our school store. So whether it be a, a, a middle school student or elementary school student or even a high school student that I need to go to court for or something like that, I'm able to take that data directly from live school and say, these are the positive things that he's doing. Yes, he has done a lot of negative things, but because of live school, I'm able to give you that quantitative data um, for, for what he's doing positive. Wow. Yeah, that, that, that's powerful. It is always easy to bias on collecting data on the negative stuff. <laughs> so have it, having, having the positives, uh, that, that's really powerful. Seems like you're always full of ideas for ways to kind of push, push the system forward. I'm curious, what are you cooking up for, say, the spring? Or have you even started thinking ahead to, to next school year at all? Yeah, we're actually working on an initiative now, um, like I said, through our multiple schools that we're working on, because the, the biggest push that we've had across the district is how do we increase parental involvement? How do we increase parents to get involved? And like I said, there a lot of the parents, and no fault to anybody, they almost like <laughs> they almost turned off most of our communication, because when we communicate to them, it's usually something negative. So how can we reestablish that communication, but keep it in a positive thing? So in all of my and all of our live school systems, we actually deactivated the demerits portion that you guys have on there um, so that we make sure that when, when it comes to live school, when it comes to live school data is only positive, is only is only positive things that are going on. So one initiative we're working on is how can we increase that and how can we reward students and staff for increase in parental involvement. So we're, we're going to utilize a lot of the new features that you guys have coming out and more importantly, that parent portal so that, so that parents can have live data on how their students are doing uh, in their classroom. So as teachers are rewarding um, their students for positive things, sitting in the seat, turning their assignments on time, following our pride model, parents will get that automatic notification on their device to say, hey, Johnny's doing good in class because I see this, the teachers are warning their parent for, for that. And that just opens up the door of communication so that if we do need to have some, some of the conversations on how to improve behaviorally or academically, that, that, that positive commu- connection is there because we started with positive and we ended with positive. All right. That's fantastic. So really a push around, around parent engagement and parent involvement. Uh, I, I, I'd love to wrap up with some uh, bigger picture questions, if that's okay. Uh, so the first one is um, more of a debate in education. I, I love to get people's perspective on this. So the debate between sort of intrinsic and extrinsic uh, motivation. You know, we all want to improve and grow uh, and become better people. But on the other hand, we all like recognition and some some rewards. Uh, what have you come to believe through your work about how those interact and, and, and the role they play in reaching your goals with students. It's funny. It's funny you brought that up as a, as a debate, because I literally have this conversation on a, on a daily basis. And it is my, and it is my firm belief that, um, that as we are trained, that the purpose of edu- any educational institution is to train up our students and to prepare them for the future. 
prepare them for the for a future and in our world that we don't know what it's going to be like we can we can estimate what it's going to be in five years but we don't know for sure you know i mean who would have thought we would be doing everything we're doing now with ai and all these different things that we're doing on a daily basis nobody would have pre- pre- predicted that so very very long story short and not to belabor this debate i'm le- i definitely lean on the intrinsic part of it intrinsic motivation but as we are developing students in our sensitive environment we must overly overly incentivize their ex- their extrinsic motivation and their outside incentives so until they're able to build up that confidence that they have to have that intrinsic motivation so the the beautiful thing is i i i lean towards working in our urban environment um, and, and if you if you're aware of it, a lot of our urban students deal with so many negative extrinsic things. So we kind of use the rule of for every negative thing that they are impacted with emotionally. We try to overdo that with three positives. So I'm constantly always trying to find ways to reward our students for little things, picking up a pencil off the floor, telling a buddy good job, helping you with tutor. And I often get that pushback from some of our tier three season staff. of Why, why are we rewarding students for things that they should be doing? And I can't, I have to explain to them, like, look, they're not going to get the positive praise or things um, at home, but we have to be that person. We are in local parentis. We're their parents for that eight hours a day while they're here five days a week. So we have to be the ones that are constantly rewarding them for positive behavior and setting those expectations. So I definitely use live school as a carrot dangling to move <laughs> to move our students forward. And I'm always looking for ways to reward our students. But to answer your question directly, I, I'm a firm believer of oversaturating the extender, uh, the outside motivation until students are able to build up their confidence to have that interior motivation and do what they need to do. That is a, a really, I think, powerful uh, description of some of the dynamics that are going on and, and, and the role that extrinsic plays in getting to what I think all educators really care the most about at the end of the day, which is developing students, you know, intrinsic uh, you know, doing the right thing even when no one's looking. But I think you spoke to the complexities of developing that. It, it's not so easy. You can't just, you know, push a button and, and develop that in students. And so I think what you're doing is really creating these environments that teach students, you know, the, 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 the benefits and, and the values that uh, you're trying to instill in them, which is a powerful thing. Definitely, definitely. Uh, one last question. If you had a billboard that every assistant principal in the country would see uh, on their way to work in the morning, uh, is there a message that you would want to share that, you know, has been key to, to you and your career as an educator? Yeah, I mean, the message has been is all about opportunities. Um, I often use and coin the, co- coin the phrase that it is our job to create opportunities for success. And what that means is, is that like myself and we talk about influences we talk about uh different areas of 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 opportunities or that we were given is that we can always look back into our our academic career and we all can identify that one or two teachers or one or two administrators that gave us an opportunity to be great and and we're, the pleasure of working in an urban environment is that we're limited for those opportunities so it is our job to work extra hard and to give 100 or 200 percent to create those opportunities for our students so that they can shine so the beautiful thing once again going back to your live school platform is is it makes it very easy for us to create that opportunity because i i don't have to find out a way to reward a student for different things i can literally go on my phone i see a kid you know pick up some trash in the cafeteria go on my phone type their name and i'm rewarding you for that for that behavior and it's a beautiful thing because I've created that opportunity for them to be successful. So next time that they see me walking in the hallway, hey, Dr. Jones, you see I'm picking up this pencil. <laughs> you know what I mean? Granted, they're, they're, they're feeding into that, into that reward. But my goal is I just want you to be a better person. Now, because of that reward, you are a better person. You're keeping things moving forward. So creating opportunities for success will be on that billboard. And it's just a reminder of the obligation of us as educators to make sure our students are set up for success. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Jones, truly a pleasure pleasure to uh, to talk with you and, and learn from you. Uh, and so many things that, that you're doing, I think, are, are happening in York that I'm just really excited to watch because I think that the impact of doing those things consistently across the district and creating that culture of positivity, being a little goofy, having the waffle days, really having fun with students and celebrating them, I think the impacts are going to be really um, incredible to watch as that compounds over time. So, Congrats to you and thanks for for everything you do for students and your staff. Thank you for having me. And once again, thank you for 
for the platform and the opportunity. Appreciate you.